Have you ever wondered about those really healthy people that just seem like they have it together all the time? Most of us mere mortals think that it comes down to like an ironclad willpower. But as a dietitian, I'm here to actually challenge that thought and show you a different way. If you could be a fly on the wall and watch some of my healthiest clients in action, you would see that they don't use a ton of willpower. So I'm gonna invite you into my own kitchen and show you something that I call the weekly ritual of how you can set yourself up for success with healthy eating. So in today's video, what I wanna go through are the three most powerful things I do in my own weekly healthy food prep. And I think a lot of people have the misconception that it's this whole bodybuilder, I'm in the kitchen for four hours on a Sunday cooking chicken and broccoli and brown rice. And so people have the idea that A, it's boring and B, it's very time consuming. Instead, I wanna show you three of my favorite secrets under the hood of what I do to keep healthy eating on track during a busy work week. So we're gonna focus on making a veggie bucket. We're also gonna get our snacks ready. And finally, we're gonna cook one healthy meal together. So then that way you've all got your kitchen set up where the healthy choice is the easy choice. So I have this really bad joke where I say the crisper drawer is our drawer of death. If we go and place our wonderful vegetables in this crisper drawer, I know you guys have the best of intentions to eat everything that you shopped for, but raise your hand, I'm gonna out myself, that if you put some of your vegetables in your crisper drawer, how many of us a week or two later have pulled those vegetables out <laughs> and they've rotted a sad death? So I'm gonna teach you something a little bit differently than using your crisper drawer. And instead, we're gonna do something called anchoring, which is pairing our veggie bucket with grocery shopping. So let me show you what I mean. Anchoring is where you glue a new habit onto an existing behavior or habit that already exists. I'll give you a perfect example. If you're someone that shampoos your hair and you've got long hair like me, you probably follow shampooing up with conditioner. And so on the days I don't wash my hair, I don't end up putting any conditioner in. But on the days I do wash my hair, the conditioner is anchored to shampooing. So when I think about grocery shopping, as I was showing with the crisper drawer, it is where our good intentions and our healthy vegetables go to die. Out of sight, out of mind, right? So we're already in chore mode when we go out to get fresh groceries. Why not anchor five more minutes and instead of putting our vegetables away in our refrigerators, where some will get eaten and some probably will go to waste, why don't we just get them washed and cut up? So again, the motto of today's video is the healthy choice is the easy choice. So let's run through really quickly making what I call a vegetable bucket. So what we're gonna need is some kind of a container, doesn't have to be fancy, where we're gonna store our vegetables for the week. Obviously we need a cutting board and a knife. And then what I try to do is I leave the last little bit of my grocery bin filled with fresh vegetables out. And the last part I'm gonna anchor to grocery shopping is washing and chopping my vegetables. All right, so now that we've got our produce all washed and ready to go, the last part of making our veggie bucket is we just need to have a container that we're gonna store everything in. And I wanna give you just a couple of tips. I find having a paper towel just to line the bottom helps with moisture control. And then some of the things I like to include in my veggie bucket, um, I still do keep in the wrapping. So carrots are a good example where I don't want them to dry out and get that white little crusty bit on the outside. So what I just do is I poke a little hole and then just kind of tuck them into the corner, keeping them in their own bag. Now cucumbers will go slimy the fastest. So a couple of tips just to kind of preserve them a little bit longer. We find in our family cutting them into slightly fatter chunks and then you push the cucumber back together or buying the baby cucumbers and then you can just wash the whole baby cukes, put them in your little veggie bucket and then when I go to eat them, I just bite off the nub and they're good to go. 
So we'll just kind of chop our cucumber nice and fat. So that's really helpful. And I'm gonna also multitask really quickly and get my lunch for tomorrow ready while I'm making the veggie bucket. So we like to use these little lunch bento boxes. And what's so great is the way that they're subdivided is there's almost room for a miniature vegetable bucket in the bottom of the lunch container. So what I like to do as I'm making my weekly veggie bucket is I'll also quickly make a veggie bucket in one of my lunches so I can kind of double up on the efficiency. So a couple different ways to cut your peppers. You can cut them off by the top or another fast way is to just kind of cut them down the side. And then if say you're making fajitas for dinner or a salad and you want to cut them down into smaller pieces, it's so easy to grab that from your veggie bucket and then just go chop a bit further. And what I like to do as a mix inside my veggie bucket is some things that do require some chopping and then some things that are really easy and don't take any effort to prepare. So the baby carrots are an example, the grape or cherry tomatoes, you might get snow peas or sugar snap peas or green beans. So things that you just basically rinse and add to your veggie bucket. And so celery is another one of my favorite weekly veggie bucket items, but usually I put them in their own separate container, just kind of floating in a little bit of water and it keeps it nice and crisp so that if you're having that by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in your work week, putting them in their own little container of water makes them feel really fresh and keeps the crispness when you're ready to go eat them. We'll pop the lid on our veggie bucket and now, instead of it going in our crisper, our drawer of death, we've made the healthy choice the easy choice. And what we're gonna just do is pop that away in the fridge for easy access anytime we want throughout the week, as well as dinner prep, packing lunches, and now my good intentions are gonna end up in my belly where I want them to go. Another thing you can do to really set yourself up for success for the week is to think about what you want to have for your weekly snacks. So where a lot of people end up sort of stress eating or impulsively choosing food at the end of the workday is they actually let themselves get too hungry. So if we can think about managing our blood sugar levels throughout our workday or school day by thinking about these two concepts. I think about fueling my body about every three to five hours and what I'm always aiming to put in me is a source of fiber, so usually a fruit or a vegetable, and a source of protein. So again, that could be a plant source or an animal source. Of course, there'll be some healthy fats and healthy carbs that come as part of this framework, but if we think about planning snacks around fiber and protein, you're gonna be really well set up for success. But the other thing I like to think about is efficiency. So this concept comes off, off of bulking or doing things in batch. And so when I teach my nutrition clients about healthy snacking, we all often, often turn it into a little game. Either pick two, make 10, or pick one, make five. And what the concept is, is knowing yourself. Do you like smaller meals and snacks spread regularly, or does your day get a little bit busier and you eat less often, but slightly larger amounts? So a pick two, make 10, is someone that likes a morning snack and an afternoon snack, and what we'll do is for efficiency, decide on two nutritious snacks for the week. Again, based around protein and fiber. You make five of the morning snack, identical, five of the afternoon snack, identical. So the two snacks are different, but the five snacks themselves are the same. And then you can put those 10 snacks in the fridge and it's all grab and go. So for this week, I'm keeping it super simple. I got five Honeycrisp apples, so what we're just gonna do is pre-peel the little sticker that they come with. We're gonna do some protein and fiber from the almonds and dry roasted unsalted peanuts. And this is my pick one, make five, which makes snacking really, really easy. So in true kind of efficiency, what we can do is I'm just gonna take my unsalted almonds and add just a little handful. And again, nuts are a really healthy choice for us. They are a bit higher in calories, but they're packed full of vitamins and minerals. So one way to help with the portion control is to have a serving container that you know kind of limits the amount you're gonna eat instead of just reaching into the bag and grabbing a handful when you feel hungry. 
So almonds are one of the highest calcium nuts and seeds that are out there. Well, per, uh, peanuts are actually the nut that is highest in protein. So again, it's a great combo. And not to put these two on a pedestal, I'll mix in things like pumpkin seeds, which are the highest iron source of nut and seed. Um, sunflower seeds are a great option. They're actually highest in vitamin E. Um, so feel free to really mix it up. And variety really is the spice of life. Boom, we have our snacks ready for the week. We've got five containers of nuts and seeds. We've got five apples ready to go. And so at nighttime, when I'm starting to pack my lunch for the next day, this is gonna be so easy because it's gonna be front and center in my refrigerator. So that is pick one, make five. Or if I knew I was someone that wanted to eat at two points in the day, I might maybe do vegetables and hummus or crackers and cheese and veggies. So the goal is just to have five to 10 snacks loaded in your fridge where again, the motto is make the healthy choice, the easy choice. And you can see that I've taken willpower out of the equation and instead my routine has set me up for success. So one of my favorite meals to batch cook myself is a really vegetable loaded chili because it freezes well, it's really quick to prepare. I can kind of set it and forget it in the slow cooker and come back in a few hours later and just sort of put it away. So what I like to do is go back to my veggie bucket and I'm a big fan of throwing in lots of different colored peppers. So I'm gonna get some red and green peppers pulled from the veggie bucket. And then all I have to do is chop them down a little bit finer because most of the main work is done from my veggie bucket. And so as I make chili, one of the things I like to do is just have a big bowl ready and then I can mix all the vegetables so they're evenly distributed throughout the chili. So we'll chop a few more peppers. So the next thing I'm gonna add is I'm just gonna put a few celery stalks into the chili as well. So we'll cut the ends off. We'll kind of coarsely chop our celery, throw some of that into our chili. Another thing I like to put in, I like to eat a lot of dark green vegetables if I can in the week. You've probably heard how nutritious they are for you. So zucchini is another thing I like to put in my chili. And I don't know if this is the right way to cut a zucchini, but what I like to do is I like to sort of quarter it, but keep it still attached by the end. And it just makes it go a little bit faster. Another way you can do zucchini is if you have a cheese grater, you can also grate your zucchini on a cheese grater and it makes it almost um, invisible inside the chili. So for those of you that have kids, that's a great way to hide some zucchini in your chili as well. So I'm gonna go in and get some organic baby carrots here, and we'll just add a few for their beta carotene. And again, just kind of coarsely chop it. And then I really love to feed my gut microbiome, and one of their favorite foods is actually beans and legumes. So I normally try to buy two different varieties of a no salt added bean. So this week's chili is gonna have some kidney beans. I also wanted to go with some chickpeas this week. Every week I always go with something a little different. So it's up to you what you like. And I don't wanna forget onions. Now if you're a pro chef, you're probably gonna make fun of me for how I cut an onion. I probably don't cut it as uh, professionally as probably the chefs do, but it works for me. This is how I like to cut an onion. Onions have so many great health properties and they're good for heart health. They're amazing to prevent cancer and kill cancer cells inside of us. Now, a great tip if you're feeling stressed on time is sometimes just to pay for convenience. So when I was at the grocery store today, I bought the sliced and washed mushrooms. I'm still gonna wash them one more time, but sometimes it's also okay just to pay for the grocery store to speed things up and help you out. So in this case, I'm just gonna use the grocery store sliced mushrooms. I'm gonna chop them up just a bit coarser. If I was also being a bit lazy, I could just throw them in as they are, but we'll, we'll try to make them just a bit smaller. Perfect, that's good enough for my purposes. Done is better than perfect. And now we can go throw them into our slow cooker. 
while we're getting our beef cooked and ready to go. Now I could just make this as a vegetarian or vegan chili just as is. I've got some protein with the beans. Um, but for me, I like to get the iron source, especially from an animal base where you get a little bit more of that heme iron. So today we're also going to add a ground beef to the chili. One of the best things I ever bought off Facebook Marketplace was a second slow cooker for $8. Because again, as I get into this batch cooking routine, I was finding I was overflowing one and having to kind of cook it in two batches in the same day. And it just wasn't very efficient. So by getting a second one that was identical, again, I can be efficient and make the healthy choice the really easy choice. And look at that, all plant food, so good for our gut microbiome. That really only took a couple of minutes to get ready, especially with the veggie bucket. And that's gonna be the base of our chili before we add our spices and our sauce. I am actually a stage three ovarian cancer survivor. So I was given a really horrible prognosis of living to five years. I think the stat was about eight to 9% of women with ovarian cancer actually do make it five years. I've just passed the four year mark of my surgery. So things are going really well. I am technically in remission right now, but I wanted to share something really cool about one of my favorite foods. I've really upped in my, my intake since learning about my cancer diagnosis, and that is green onions. So green onions have a compound in them that is known to kill cancer cells when you're both actively fighting cancer and if you get those precancerous cells that could develop into cancer. So I jokingly call green onions my cancer fairy dust. I like to chop them up all the time. I add them to salads and soups and chilies. So that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna make some fairy dust and keep kicking cancer's butt. We'll add the green onions as the very last step, as kind of the chili topper. And it's just a fun way that I like to eat a lot more green onions in my diet. It doesn't take a lot of work to really cut them up and add them. And who knows, maybe this has been a big part of why I'm in that eight or 9% of people who are doing okay when it comes to cancer recovery. So if you or a loved one have cancer, this might be a kind of fun tip you wanna share with them where green onions are potent cancer chemo, um, but there's no toxicity, which is the greatest part about eating them. So the very last thing we're gonna do as part of setting up our week for success is I'm at least gonna finish making my lunch for tomorrow. So we already started the veggie bucket when we had our master veggie bucket on the go. And again, I'm gonna show you that sometimes it's okay just to pay for the healthy choice to be the easy choice. So I always like to try to add a healthy fat to my lunch. So I'm gonna add a couple olives to this extra little tray that comes on top. And we'll have those for some healthy fat. And then this week, sometimes I like to make it from scratch, but it's also okay to pay for a shortcut. So what I'm gonna do is add a bean salad from the grocery store as a great source of fiber and slow digesting carbs. And then I also doubled up and got a lentil salad. So instead of making like a sandwich or having to batch cook, in this case, I'm gonna have the slow digesting fiber and carb from a lentil bean salad, and this will last me a few lunches. The other thing I'm trying to do for healthy gut health is add some kind of prebiotic or fermented food. So I'm trying out this Ontario made sauerkraut. And again, I don't know if I'm gonna love it, but it's an experiment, we'll see how it goes. So what I'm trying to do with each of my lunches is just put a little bit of sauerkraut into my healthy meal. So then that way my gut bacteria are getting properly nourished with something they really enjoy. So we'll put a little bit of that into my tray. Now I also am gonna add just a quick source of protein with a little baby bell cheese. And then what I like to do as a final protein is hard boil a few eggs for the week and that way I can just sort of toss some eggs into my lunch. And I've got my vegetable tray on the bottom layer. I've got some beans and olives and sauerkraut. I also bought a little bit of hummus to go with the veggies. So we'll get that set up for the week. And then what we'll do to finish it off is put some eggs on the stove and get those guys boiling. And now we have a really healthy, nutritious whole food lunch made in like under five minutes, which is really great. 
So as we wrap up our healthy, quick prep for the week, you can see that I have a lunch made for tomorrow. I've got the pick one, make five, easy breezy snacks ready to go. I have a big fresh veggie bucket so I can grab and add to this throughout the week. And we've got a couple slow cookers on the go, making some healthy chili. So once that's ready, we'll package it up, stick it in our freezer, and you can see that it's not about being perfect. You're just trying to set yourself up for success. So if you remember any one thing, don't rely on willpower. Think about this phrase instead. Make the healthy choice the easy choice. I'm registered dietitian, Jennifer Brockstroman. Thanks for hanging out with me.